Hello, you've caught me playing Marvel Spider-Man on PS4, which isn't a hard thing to catch me doing, as I've been playing Marvel Spider-Man non-stop for about a week now, because, surprise, surprise, it's amazing. It's one of those rare games that hooks you so thoroughly, it's all you can think about. You're either playing it, or you're thinking about playing it. Now, before we dive in, I want to make it clear there are going to be no spoilers in this video whatsoever. One of the joys of this game is playing through an original Spider-Man story and discovering everything for yourself. But naturally, we are going to be showing lots of New York, lots of combat, and lots of Spider-Man doing whatever a spider can. In fact, we're going to show you seven of those things, starting with... Number one, climbing to the top of incredibly tall buildings and then jumping off again. Now, New York City is the perfect home for Spider-Man because it's so tall and dense he can get about the place without giving street level a second thought. Also, New York is home to some of the most iconic skyscrapers in the world and yes, you can climb them. Reaching the top and looking out over the city below gives you an incredible sense of how big this open world is. But my favourite thing about wool running to the top of these towers is just having a quiet moment of reflection, away from all the crime, away from the hustle and bustle of the rat race. Just sitting on top of the Chrysler building and looking out at that famous skyline gives you a real sense of calm. And then you dive off, of course, and the music kicks in and you feel like an epic superhero as you swing to the next skyscraper. Especially if the next skyscraper is this one here, which I'm sure you will recognise. Then, entry number two, when you've looked at the city from the top, I thoroughly recommend checking it out from street level and hanging out with the mortal citizens of Manhattan for a bit. Not only does this give you a different perspective on the height and scale of the open world, it also makes you feel really good about yourself because people love Spider-Man. They want to shake his hand. Thanks for all you do, Spider-Man. They want to give him high fives. Double time! They want to take selfies. Selfie! And sometimes, if they're actually undercover Fisk agents in disguise as everyday citizens, they'll want to murder Spider-Man. But it's okay, because you're Spider-Man and can respond like this. I better be more careful with my adoring public. So yeah, the third thing a spider can do in open world New York is fight crime. Across the map, thugs are doing bad things on a regular basis and they need teaching a lesson. And the best way to teach them is with your fists, with your feet, and by webbing them to the sides of buildings. Delivering silky justice to these thugs is a good thing to do for a couple of reasons. It lets you hone your combat skills against relatively small groups of enemies, and it earns you crime tokens which can then be spent on gadget upgrades and crafting new suits, which we will come on to just a bit later. What it also does is prepare you for the game's more challenging combat scenarios, which leads us on to entry number four, clearing out enemy bases. You'll find these dotted around the map, more will appear as you progress the story, and each acts as an expansive multi-layered combat arena. Personally, I like to thin out enemy numbers with a bit of stealth first. You can easily zip to any vantage point with a quick tap of L2 and R2, and from there perform a perch takedown. Lovely or a beautifully cinematic web strike takedown. Sleep it off. Eventually though, you'll want to get your fists out and besting six waves of increasingly tough enemies never feels anything other than glorious. I managed a 100 plus combo here before being an idiot and getting hit just before the end, but this still looks amazingly cool, so I'm just going to let it play out. Enjoy. You 
should run! Not a chance in hell, buddy! Oh no! Boom. Thank you very much for the base tokens, gents. I'm going to use these to, entry number five, craft some new Spider-Man suits. Now, there are lots of suits you can unlock in Marvel Spider-Man, and each one comes with its own unique suit power. But brilliantly, once you've unlocked a suit, you can use its respective power with any suit you like. So you can wear whatever you want and combine it with whatever power you want. And also, all the cutscenes in the game are generated in real time, so whatever suit you've currently got equipped will be the one Spider-Man is wearing in cutscenes. Amazing, Spider-Man. Entry 6. You can watch Spider-Man on the subway. You can fast travel to certain locations across the map and watching our hero hanging out with sleepy commuters and cosplayers along the way is just an absolute joy. I really do love the detail that's gone into these scenes. But final entry, number seven, of course, the best way to get around New York is to swing everywhere. The traversal in this game is so wonderfully liberating. Webs physically attached to the environment too, so you get a real sense of momentum as you swoop and plunge through the city. Point launching is a great way to gain speed. L2 and R2 cause Spider-Man to zip towards a point at which you're aiming. Then holding down X before you land propels you forward with added speed. You can also perform aerial tricks by holding the left stick in conjunction with triangle and circle for bonus XP. My favorite thing about swinging, however, is the contextual music. As soon as you leap off a building and start shooting webs, the score begins to build, and it just feels and sounds incredible. Honestly, I think I could do this forever. So there we are, seven things a spider can do in open world New York City. Let us know what you think of the game in the comments, it's out on PS4 right now. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video and click that notification bell to stay up to date with everything from the world of PlayStation. For the players.